Hi there, I'm Janine Woodcock, executive coach, author and speaker. This video is for you if you've been furloughed. I've been doing some research for the last month during the COVID-19 um, pandemic on the experience of being furloughed. I've been talking to leaders, I've been talking to those of you who have been furloughed, and this film will give you a summary of those research findings, as well as some hints and tips on how to manage yourself through the furloughed experience. So let's have a look at the summary level survey results. So the survey was conducted with a set of questions which I asked people to respond as strongly agree through to strongly disagree. The first question I asked was, now I'm furloughed, I feel okay and I have no concerns at all. And only 21% of you that were furloughed felt okay about that. The rest of you are facing some significant fears and concerns. And there were six questions um, that I asked in relation to those um, concerns specifically. So one was around loss of routine, one was around a fear of loss of purpose. Um, there was one around connection with my company, connection with my teams and colleagues, and then two questions around finances. So one around future um, worries about redundancy and then finances during the furlough period. And as you can see from this slide, um, the responses were fairly definitive in the sense that these are real concerns for you guys who are being furloughed. Clearly, um, fear of future redundancy comes out really highly, um, but the others are all bubbling around um, the same. In addition to that, there were also um, some concerns, additional concerns that came out from the comments that I asked for. Um, and those additional concerns were um, concerns around having children at home and the impact that has, strong comments around the finances and redundancy, as you would expect, um, but there are also serious concerns around mental well-being. Um, some concerns about physical health. Only 5% of the comments that we got were actually positive, saying I'm really enjoying the furloughed experience. Um, significant concern around skills. Um, and skills degradation, whether that be general skills or virtual skills, and also about reboarding. So what's the experience going to be like as and when you go back to work? So now we've looked at the main findings from the survey, I want to come to the um, hints and tips to help you manage yourself through this really, really difficult time. So the first thing I want to share with you is a framework that kind of underpins everything I'm going to talk to you about. And this is, this starts with you thinking about what is the only thing that you have control over in this world? Now, a lot of people struggle with that because they kind of go, what is the only thing? And as I'm talking, you may have got to the answer that the only thing you actually have control over is yourself and your own emotions and responses to things. And even that is really tough sometimes. Um, but if you think about, uh, and I'll bring this up as a slide in a minute, but if you think about a bullseye type diagram, so you've got three circles, one in the middle, then another one, then another one. That circle in the middle is yourself and your own actions. The second circle are things that you can influence in how you behave, so the actions that you choose to take. So that second circle are things you can influence, but you can't control the outcome because the only thing you can actually control are your own actions. And then the very outside circle are things that are even outside your influence. Now, what happens when we are faced with really challenging situations and some of the fears that we've seen come up in the survey are really challenging. When we think and ruminate on some of those things, so for example, um, fear of future redundancy, you don't have any control over that. That really sits in that outside circle. Um, so the more we focus on those things and ruminate, the more they grow and they amplify. So this circle framework is a way of helping you notice when you're feeling really anxious and overwhelmed by something, noticing where it sits on that framework, because often those things are in the outside, and then your energy goes into coming into that circle and ultimately coming back to choosing what actions you want to take next. So as we go through each of the fears that came up in the survey in a minute, I'll be referencing this concept as we go through that. So here's that slide I was talking about. So the centre circle there you can see is the focus you have on your actions. They are the only thing you can control. And the main focus here is to think about 
what you would like to create, whether that's in the moment or whether that's in the future. So if in the moment what you'd like to create is feeling less anxious, then choose something that's going to help you feel less anxious. That might be tidying, it might be baking some banana bread, it might be doing some gardening, I've no idea, but choose something in the moment that will help you create that calm. Move your attention away from that thing in the outside circle. If it's something in the future you'd like to create, which we'll look at in a minute, so that might be um, potentially changing job sector if the sector you're in has a high likelihood of um, shrinking given the situation that we're in, then choose some actions that might give you some more skills. So that's the centre. Um, and the second layer there are actions that you can have to influence. So what happens when we're in that outer layer? So let's imagine you are focused on um, the fact that you are losing contact with your company and that's really not sitting well with you. You could just stay in that outside circle and worry about it and think about all the work that everybody's doing and you're, you're losing touch and you don't know what's happening with some of your clients or your contacts and you could just really amplify that worry there. But if you recognise using this tool that that is something you don't have control over what those people are doing, but what you do have control over is moving in a circle is how you choose to interact with your colleagues. There are very strict rules on furloughing what you can do, but we'll come back to that. Um, so you're moving yourself in to then say, okay, coming right into that inner circle, what can I do right now? So let's take that approach with the circles and apply that to what we've seen in the survey. So your experiences of being furloughed. So we've got the focusing on your own actions right in the centre of that circle, which we'll show in green. Um, we've got choosing which actions to take, so that second circle, which we'll show in blue. And then the things in the outside circle to really reduce your focus on. So let's look at the various things that came up in the survey. So in red there, those are the direct questions that we asked with the percentage responses. And the green are the additional things that came out in the survey comments. So if we take a first look at how we apply that principle to the things that came out in the survey, you can see there the yellow things, and there's only one, which is the redundancy, are the things that you have absolutely no control over, and there is nothing you can do to influence that on this occasion. So the recommendation here is that you reduce your focus on that. Then you've got the blue elements, um, which are things that you can take some action towards. Um, and again, we'll look at these in a bit more detail in a minute. Um, so they're things you can take action towards, but you can't control what actually happens. And then there are the things in green where you can actually have a high degree of control by choosing what it is you do. So really focusing on the actions you can take on a day to day basis. So now let's have a look at each of the fears and let me give you a few hints and tips to try and manage yourself through this um, difficult time. So if we start with the um, fear of redundancy and the financial concerns, um, and that's financial concerns during the furlough period because you're only on 80% of your salary um, and at this point in time we don't know what's going to be happening from um, July onwards. So. Um, there are some very practical things you can do. Um, so the financial concerns, um, by all means, look up things like the Money Advice Service, um, Martin Lewis, Money Saving Expert. But the action you can take, if you think about coming outside from the outside of that circle and letting those concerns become huge and trying to come into your own actions, the actions you can take are to do what you can to live within your means. Um, now, I know for some people that's extraordinarily difficult, but there is some tiny upside around this if you're really struggling in that I feel at this moment in time there is less um, shame, difficult word to use, but less shame around asking for help because so many people are in really, really difficult situations. So do what you can to live within your, within your means, ask for help go to your mortgage provider, um, if you need a payment holiday, ask to go on interest only. There are loads of hints and tips out there in terms of how you can um, try and 
manage this difficult time financially. From a redundancy perspective, as we said, that's outside your control, so there isn't much you can do about that at this moment in time. Um, so it is about reducing your focus on the redundancy. Looking at the loss of connection with your company or with your team and colleagues. Now this is something um, that we had the green highlighter on. So these are things that you actually can do something about. Um, so try not to just get stuck in that outside circle and complain and say, oh, nobody's keeping in touch with me. Nobody's um, telling me what's going on. You can take some actions here. So if you're missing your company and missing that connection, then ask for some Zoom calls, social Zoom calls, because as we said earlier, there are some very strict guidelines on what you can do in furlough. So make a request for some of those with some of your people, some of your colleagues, some of your teams. Have a beer Friday, have a quiz, whatever it might be. And even ask the CEO and say, look, I'm really, maybe send a, an email. You might have to come from your private account if your email's been switched off. But, you know, you're really keen to keep in touch with what's happening with the company. Would it be possible for him or her to send out a, a regular update? Some of my clients are doing that and it's being really well received by their, by their teams. Loss of purpose and loss of routine. This is a little bit more difficult because obviously without having to get up in the morning, that is quite a challenging one. Um, but what I would recommend here in terms of loss of purpose is to set yourself a purpose during furlough. Um, and you may have already set yourself some kind of mini purposes, if you like, which is to, I don't know, learn to speak Italian or learn to code in some new language, whatever it might be. However, come back up a step and do something a little bit more general. So it might be something like, overall at this point, you're gonna be kind to yourself, you're going to live within your new means, and maybe you're gonna do one thing you love every day, one thing that makes you feel good about yourself every day. Another thing that's really useful in terms of purpose is, and research has shown this, is when we help people, that makes us feel good. So there's all sorts of ways that you can um, volunteer um, at this time. Um, there is a website which is n for November, c v for Victor, o dot org dot uk, um, which has all sorts of information. And as I record this in the news today, Prince Charles was putting a call out for people to not volunteer, but to go and work and help fruit picking, which might be something you might want to consider over the um, over the summer. Um, but be careful in terms of setting those goals and, oh, I need to learn to do all these five new things. So I'm going to get brilliant at yoga. I'm going to learn, you know, I'm going to train and do a marathon in, in by the end of this period. If you set yourself too much to do, that in itself can cause challenges. And as we'll see when we come on to mental health later, and if you download the survey, you'll see some of the comments there where people are saying, oh, I'm really concerned that I'm not gonna achieve what I want to. So just really be careful and balance um, what it is you want to um, achieve and be sensible and realistic. In terms of um, loss of routine, um, I've got some other YouTube channels, sorry, some other films on my channel that talk about setting routines. So do have a look at those to focus in on that one. So those are the um, fears that have come up in the survey itself. And then we had the additional fears that came up in the comments. So let's look at each of these. Um, so there was a significant concern around the skills. So part of this was the virtual working skills. So for those of you that are furloughed, you're not getting the same depth of experience using Zoom and Teams, et cetera, that perhaps your teams are or your colleagues are. Um, so if you are having beer Fridays and those are via Zoom, then that's a good way of getting to um, learn some of those skills. But alternatively, there is lots of information out there online. So again, don't get stuck in that outside circle, complaining, saying, oh, nobody's doing anything. It's all out of my control. You can actually teach yourself some of these skills. Sign up to some webinars. Maybe you're less interested in the content, but just sign up to see how they use the tech. I've learned loads by doing that over this period. Um, the other skills that came up there, these are for those of you that are working in industries where there may be less jobs available as we move forward. So this is now a time to think about what other skills you could develop where there will be needs. And again, if you go onto the government websites, um, this is already being looked at. So areas in um, sustainability, green management of our country, um, technology, et cetera, et cetera. So there are growth sectors. So at this point in time, do some research and find out where you may be interested 
in um, learning more. So one of the other things that came up in the comments was this concept of a concern around what it's going to be like to go back to work. So people are concerned that they won't have the same energy levels because they'll have got used to managing their day in a completely different way, might have got, you know, not having to do the commute, etc. Um, there's a concern about how the teams that you're going back to join will feel about you as a furloughed employee. So the whole principle, and this is, seems to be being called reboarding at the moment, um, the whole concept of reboarding is an important one. And again, you can ask for what would be useful here. So you don't have to let that happen to you. So if your company is just saying, right, you're end of furlough, you're coming back in on such and such a day, and the expectation is it's just going to be business as normal, what you might want to say is, actually, that's amazing. I'm really looking forward to coming back. But could I have time with X, Y, Z people just to understand what's happened in the last three months to bring me up to speed? Um, it's a significant time that you will have been off, out of the um, business during furlough. And it is important to give yourself time to catch up. One of the comments you'll see if you download the survey, somebody said it's a bit like coming back from maternity leave. You know, and that's really carefully managed. So this is going to be similar. So do ask again for what you need. Physical health and mental health. Again, there were lots of comments in the survey about people concerned about their mental health, actually quite linked to all of the concerns we've already gone through. So if you apply the approaches of really coming back to what you can focus on and try and reduce the focus on things that are outside your control because those cause anxiety, because there's nothing you can do about them, that will help support your mental health. Many organisations have employee assistance programmes, um, which usually include some form of counselling. So if you are really struggling, please reach out to your employers to use this service. I've used it myself in the past. They are amazing and it's super useful. Um, so, you know, there's less and less stigma about people struggling with their mental health. So please, again, ask for what you need. Physical health is actually very closely related to mental health, so I'm sure you're very aware that being outside walking is really important, um, and it links back to um, routine as well, so do build in some movement into your um, everyday um, life, and again, some of my other um, shorter YouTube films have some hints and tips on that. Um, and the final thing that came up in the um, additional comments was those of you that have children at home and how challenging that is, um, especially, I mean, if you're a single parent, that is a whole pile of um, challenge. And actually, at that moment, at this moment in time, you've really just got to do what you can to do what you need to do with your children. But when your employers bring you back into the um, workforce, that's OK to have done that. So just be proud and happy that you have spent your time being able to be with your children and look after them rather than going back and saying oh I'm sorry I haven't managed to develop myself and do xyz it's like actually my focus was working um, with my children at that time and so those are the um, things that came up in the uh, additional survey comments so just looking back once more at the overall summary that we had and looking at where you're um, moving your attention to your actions where you're choosing what actions to take, but you're accepting that you can't control the outcome, and those things where you're actually reducing your focus. I hope you found that useful. Um, if you want any more information, then by all means, um, get in touch. You'll find me at janinewoodcock.com. Um, there are some more videos here on YouTube, which you may find um, interesting. And if you want to download the full um, report, there's more detail with some of the more detailed um, comments that we got back from people, then the link is in the comments to this video. Thank you for watching and I wish you the best. Stay safe, stay well.